Hey folks, welcome to the Pro Football Art of Michael McQuaid, Mark Hogan, as we um, steamroll through this off-season lull. Mark, um, how are you doing? KJ Martasson? I wouldn't call it a lull at all. We've had a banger of a week. <laughs> I don't know. Scott this Hansen, is... Kildare fan. What's going on there? Eh? Yeah, it wasn't that good. It was the it, it was the uh, blessing that that Kildare needed or that Kildare side needed it in the end of it. But between Scott Hansen, between Henry, between a reef even the week before that we've had it i think it's almost kicking off again after since the draft we can start to focus on teams because we know who's in the building even though look we talked to a reef we talked about Zedaria smith and then ever since he was traded to the cleveland browns which shows that the machine <laughs> keeps on rolling uh, i actually put a reply out in our a, a, a reply on our account and it went mini viral people getting very angry at that so hi everyone that interacted with that tweet are, are, are you talking about henry shefflin or handsome Hank? No, having Han- handsome Hank Henry Hudson on uh, last week was definitely a big one. And especially to have him, we were able to do that before the games even got announced, which was definitely, I, d- I don't know if anyone else in the Island of Ireland was able to do that. I know our friend George, it was great to see that he had Henry um, talk sport, Sky, but to uh, be able to get that bit of access was definitely fun. And we were ready to go for an exciting slate of games. Are the Frankfurt flights booked? My fr- flight, fr- my flights and hotel were paid for prior to talking to Henry. The last thing I did, you'll probably know that I was very tight to getting on that call because I thought we were the ones that controlled the call. But it was off- actually NFL UK was the ones that controlled the Zoom call. That's the, the behind the scenes work. So I just thought that I was waiting for yourself to start the Zoom call, and then you're like, "Here, they need to let you in," and I was like, "I'm over here on Sky Scanner." <laughs> kind of flight sort of because as soon as we end this call I didn't hold on I didn't know you were booking a flight at the time hold on <laughs> sure. we've about we've about we have about 15 minutes with Henry 15 minutes after that maybe or no was it an hour after that the announcement was coming and I was like I'm not letting any flights and um, accommodation skyrocket or whatever because it happened to me last year so I had learned my lesson and I was before t- talking to Henry, I wasn't making notes or anything that kind of happened on the, on a fly talking to him. I was uh, getting my flights and accommodation. I'm buzzing for that weekend. Absolutely buzzing. I, I'm really buzzing for, for just for, just, just for those two weekends in, in Frankfurt. And it's, it's going to be a crack, obviously a massive thanks to the NFL and UK for all that help as well. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm really, really excited. I haven't booked London yet. Actually, I need to book it over the next few weeks. I will openly admit publicly that I booked the 12th and the 19th Saturday, Sunday, because you can get the Frankfurt Dublin flight for people listening. If there's a flight at 20 to 10 in the, in the evening on the Sunday, uh, I had both those weekends booked and then obviously seen very quickly. I think within about three minutes, I had the flight booked when I seen the email of the games. So um, yeah, all, all suited, all booted. I know a lot of... Um, I, I know a lot of people from Ireland are going to go over to that, so very, very excited. Also talking to a lot of people in the UK, especially Chiefs fans, there's something huge planned that Saturday night, which as uh, a Broncos fan, I can't wait to attend. Look, there's probably some people that are listening actually wondering how to do those uh, weekends away to the NFL games. I have in the past done the prior nights. I've done the after nights. Last year in Germany, I feel like I missed out on the... Saturday so I've that's the trip that I booked I'm going over Saturday and flying back on the Sunday and why I'm kind of you know expanding and telling you that it does sound tough but that airport is close close enough to the stadium that you can get out and go look if you want your drinks or whatever afterwards you want to do that but the Saturday night before I heard was absolutely lethal so if you're kind of thinking of yeah and if you're kind of thinking of doing something like a flyover day of like I did last year it's still a great buzz but uh, apparently something special happens that Saturday night of both the games. So that's Germany specific. Uh, London, you can definitely do as a day trip, although it's uh, a lot of fun to be there either side of the games too. Last last question in Germany. Are you going back on the Sunday night or what's the crack? Are you staying in London? Yeah, we're, uh, you're going to meet all the Hogans and uh, the partners on that flight and some <laughs> partners of partners. My, uh, my cousin's... Um, Boyfriend Emmett is a listener. Um, I, I was great to talk to Emmett, and we were talking Emmett about Donald. Emmett Donnan, and uh, I said to him, I think he might be saying to the Monday actually, now that I think about it. But again, this is one of those fans as well that without tickets, I, uh, you know, I was saying to everyone, you might as well go over because it's going to be absolutely lethal over there. And look, we, we say that, look, there's a there's obviously a 
uh, cost of living crisis going on in Ireland. I don't want to seem like, but it is that we got very good flights. Look, it's 80 euro for a hotel in Germany. I'm going to Galway, Tyrone on the weekend. It's 250 euro for a hotel in Galway for the night. Like that's what would make you want to do it over and back. I got my flights for a hundred euro return and then a hotel for 80 euro. You can't say no for 180 euro to get a night away in Germany. As a lad in the north here, I got to be very careful what I say, but 250 euro for hotels is disgraceful. Anyway, let's, oh, let's, move, on. let's <laughs> move on. We're, we're going to talk about the guy on this podcast and we're going to have a, a bit of an NFL twist. We're going to compare the, is there, there's 16 teams left in the All-Ireland and then there's 16 teams in the Europa Conference League, the Talchian Cup. I was calling it, the, <laughs> here, I was calling it, and don't laugh at this, the Tatalan Cup until I heard Thomas Niblock and, and Oshie McConville call it the Talchian Cup. So that's, you know, as, as as prime and as elite as a Tyrone fan, because I wouldn't watch the other one, obviously. I had no idea. But, Mark, before we even start this, yeah, we're, we're going to compare each county to, like, an NFL team. But before we even start this week, this, this actual podcast, this one podcast only, um, is presented by Diego, uh, who have got a double header on this Saturday. Uh, Diego is basically like NFL Game Pass for the guy. Um, if you're like me and you're not driving four and a half hours to Salt Hill for a five o'clock game on Saturday, you can either buy the game or get a season pass. I think it's 12 euro to buy the game or a season pass for 79 nip. Yo-yo, so it's obviously cheaper for us lads and Tyrone in the pounds. Galway Tyrone, quarter past five. But um, would we say, Mark, that first game is the equivalent of like the Chiefs against um, the Bills? Carry Mayo. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just keep going here, will we? Hold on a second. So you're comparing. So yeah, look, um, we've given ourselves the challenge of looking at notes for an hour before a podcast and staring at them like, how did I get our, us into this mess again that we have to figure out exactly what we are trying to achieve here? We're going to compare the 16 All-Ireland Series teams to our selection of 16 NFL teams, kind of who they would correspond to if that makes the most sense so if you're an nfl t- fan you can understand now the all ireland series and if you're a ga fan maybe this would be your entry point into understanding some nfl teams and who they're like for like is so it's very interesting that you say that because mayo was a team that i had to decide on the team for and i did give them the buffalo bills was that uh, your choice for them as well well, we will jump into that in just two seconds. GAGO.ie, folks, if you want to watch the games. Obviously, for people watching this, it's not just football. It's hurling also. So make sure you check that as well. I'm too far north for hurling. I, I don't play hurling. I love hurling, but I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm a football man. Right, let's, um, we'll talk more about that towards the end. But obviously, GAGO, let's have a look at these. Let's let's GAGO right now. Group one, Kerry Live Mayo Cork. Do you want to start off with Mayo then? Is, is that your... Yeah, well, now that we're after diving in, I suppose I would compare them to the Buffalo Bills. That's why I thought it was funny that you were after saying it. And there's a number of reasons that you could do so. I guess they are there or thereabouts each and every year now, it seems. If there's a top three in the GA calendar, the last 10 years, you'd have to put Mayo in it. But don't they always come third of those three then a bit like how hey, the buffalo bills you could compare them to the kansas city chiefs and the Bengals are the ones ahead of them whereas it's whether it's dublin and Kerry or it's galway and Kerry last year that were ahead of the buffalo bills that's where i'd put them there they are obviously a very rich roster and um, you know names of either team would rattle off your tongue but they're with that talent there's pressure now to contend i suppose and the Bills haven't been able to get over the line, just like Mayo hasn't been able to get over the line. So I wonder out of all these teams, is that the most um, comparable of all, all of them? Because I just think that this year, Mayo went into the All-Ireland Series as the favourite, like at the very, very, very beginning of the year, going into the league, I think even Mayo was, um, or maybe it was a couple of weeks after the league began. But you know what I'm saying? Mayo went in as a favourite and the Bills are doing, the, are doing likewise. But it's those kind of traditional teams that seem to keep on catching them out. Those ones that you think are going to beat them, the Bengals, the Chiefs, just like Dublin and Kerry are able to beat them. We've got two minutes in and we've already said the word Dublin. Um, yeah, you got Aidan O'Shea on one side, Josh Allen on the other, the, the two QBs, one can argue. Um, I'll just say it out loud and I'll, I'll move on to my team or my county comparison. They're both cursed. No, they're not. Oh, I don't believe that. There you I, go, I, yeah. I do not believe in the Mayo curse at all because I sat in Croker watching my county beat them in the All-Ireland and 
they're not cursed. So I'll, I'll just put it that way. Um, the one other apparently... similarity you could say is the um, the home venues as well. It's not going good going up to Castle Bar, just like it's not going up to to Orchard Park. Have you been to Buffalo before? No, I haven't. That's why it's too intense. <laughs> no, I loved it. I loved it. Delighted to be able to see the Bills in London this year, of course. And shout out to every Mayo NFL fan. We we really appreciate you. Tweet at Hogan NFL. Annoy him if you want us to come to Castle Bar next year instead of going to a London or Frankfurt or wherever game next year. Um, right, Kerry. I am going to say, you know, to compare them to an NFL team, you got to compare them to both pre and post merger NFL championships, the pageantry around the team. And I'll say with the colors green and yellow, I'm going to say the Green Bay Packers. Uh, you've obviously got Polly and you, you, you've got Polly and David there, the Clifford lads. Well, we had Aaron and Amari there also, the Rogers lads. And uh, back in the day, they're not related, obviously, but um, I don't know. It just it just seemed like the, the the obvious choice to go to because Kerry, Jesus, Mark, I I could not believe how many All Irelands Kerry have actually won. Them. Like it's actually disgraceful. Like how is anybody supposed to catch up with that? It's not going to happen in our lifetime anyway. Certainly not going to happen like in the next hundred years, probably going at the minute. Well, then again, Dublin could overtake them at some point. But um, I think the Packers is probably the most like relevant one. You could argue if you're looking at the historic Lambeau Field, you could compare. I, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. Is there like a famous old stadium that we could compare them to? No, there's not. Packers, Packers carry. I'm I'm really intrigued to see who, who you're going to compare live to because you've got the Messiah, Mark II, as the manager there in live. Didn't have a great day on Sunday, obviously, against Dublin. That was uh, an interesting game. Do you agree with that Kerry comparison? Uh I do and I don't. Um I Oh here do we go. In a, I do in a general no, I do in a general sense, but I Quickly, alarm bells ringing that we have probably taken a wrong approach <laughs> to this exercise because I've definitely ta- taken a lot more short ter- term. Short term, I have looked specifically at where the teams are at now versus historically. Because otherwise, maybe I would have compared uh, Kerry to well, yeah, the Packers. I think from that point of view, I don't think you go straight away with the Steelers or the Patriots, who obviously have the most uh, rings. To but um, but when you go to loud, definitely my entry point into this team was Mickey Hart and it kind of looks like a Sean McVay that because of the head coaches they give their team a bump despite what roster so sorry LA Rams is my comparison despite the uh, roster deficiencies you could say the manager gives them the ability to kind of obviously compete now there's two ways of looking at that this year in the league this year, I thought Loud looked really, really good. Obviously, they brought it to the final half of the final weekend. They went into the Dublin performance underdogs, but if they beat under, uh, if they beat Dublin in the league this year, they would have been promoted to Division One, and they would have justly done so. But then they went in a half time, I think level or maybe a point or two behind, and they came out in the second half, and Dublin just got the better of them and looked a far classier side. So you can kind of look at that and hopefully say, you know, like, oh, there is a future there again. But then you look at what we just saw over the weekend in the Lancer final where they got absolutely demolished. And that kind of spoke to me a bit like the Rams departures this year. You know, they offload a lot of key players and that kind of um, deflating feeling that you got from all those players was the same as the deflating feeling I got with seeing Loud being hammered and not quite the side that I had hoped they'd be in this All-Ireland series. Mickey Hart is not Sean Payton. But is Mickey Hart like Bill Belichick-ish? Like, could you imagine Belichick leaving the Patriots or being forced out of New England? Somebody else coming in, they win the Super Bowl next year and then and then Belichick goes somewhere else and tries to do it. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I turned on the match the other day um, and I mean, like it was four something. And shout out to Dublin. Like I've, like I've had Dean Rock on podcast before. He's a big NFL fan. So let's just move on before we start offending people. Um, Cork. Oh God. <laughs> Cork. Here we go. Uh, shout out to Jason Hayes and all these Cork NFL fans. We are in Cork. I want to say on the twenty sixth of November. Woolshed. Profootball.ie. Um, I find this one the most difficult one to do because you've obviously got a county that leads leans more towards hurling than football 
But then going back on it, like what was it, 2010, they beat down in the All Ireland final. And it's been like, you know, before that. And you were sort of worrying there saying, oh, you, like you focus more on the current things. I, 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 I would say mine is a bit of a mix. So for Cork, I look at Cork obviously as probably Ireland's second city, um, level with Belfast, maybe. Um, I've, I, you know, Mark, I've never been to Cork. And that's going to change this year. So I'm very, very excited to actually go there. But I, I would say the size of the city, the expectation around the city and the county, I am going to say the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. Historic county embedded in the sport. Um, it's been a while since they've won a Super Bowl or since they've won a championship. Sorry. I mean, you, you take 2010 away, they haven't won a football title since. And it's, I, I, I know they're more hurling. But it just, it was hard because I was going through different divisions and the Cowboys just stood out to me for court. Am I mad? Um, you are right because when we first thought of this idea, it was on a whim back in March when we had Jason Hayes on. And I don't know how we got it into the conversation just like i don't know how we got ended up in this conversation today but uh yeah that was the one that we decided on because they as i suppose the people's republic right i mean the narrative within the state and the county itself or once i have written my alternatives down or who i would have if they were my team i thought you were gearing up to compare them to the new england patriots that you know and this is you know the i'm looking at it more recent that they are seen traditionally as a powerhouse whereas you don't quite know what either cork or the new england patriots future holds but you can equally say that about the dallas cowboys and yeah i think the um look i don't mean to offend anyone but you know the the pride of their own place um is definitely similar between texans and corkonians corkonianites can uh, look jason can tell us what the uh the the official slang or term for the the core people is i'm literally going to time mark this whole thing and i'm going to say basically um so the just tonight so pat mcafee's going to espn right and i'm tweeting something right now um he's going to espn this, this autumn uh this don't worry we are going to move on from this podcast so i don't know they're going to be on like the espn youtube channel anyone listens to pat mcafee but i've i've took a meme from think the godfather like counting money and we'll see how I suppose, we'll see how well it goes any anywho it's time for group two yeah group dos the, the group of death the only group that matters in the all ireland series because <laughs> the winner of the all ireland <laughs> is coming from this group and it's not west meath jerry mullins if you're listening to this and um, galway are my own west meath uh, so i've got I've got Galway and Tyrone. I have to. I have to love how you didn't give me Armagh here. So I, I'd love you to start off with Armagh. Tell me the. Crack. I thought you wanted Tyrone being your own county, and I certainly didn't want to offend you by taking Tyrone. <laughs> so I, I took Armagh. Um, Armagh being to me the 49ers. Um, so close, but they can't get across the line. It seems that you know they are Bottlers. absolutely. I mean, I'm, you I'm can't joking. really. No, I mean you can't. You can't really call the 49ers that based on the losing the quarterback last year, but they absolutely look like world beaters until they no longer do. I mean, they absolutely coasted into the NFC Championship game last year. You'd absolutely expect them to get back there this year, but a bit like Armagh, whether it's in the Ulster final and they are two points up with five minutes to go against a team that hasn't been able to put two points on the board in a five-minute spell for the whole stretch of the game, or if you go back to the Galway game last year where they were able to bring it to extra time and then, you know, they went to penalties again, that... You know, they, they look like an absolutely serious team, but they just can't get the Super Bowl to show off and to go down in history that they were there, thereabouts the whole time and that they gave us this great entertainment. Like talking about them after the game the other day, like my brother was saying, oh, yeah, I'd sit have our math for the all Ireland." I was like, you can't say that now after the back of their losses because they showed the Iron Clutch. And look, Ulster teams do complement each other's style of play or whatever. But when I go back to it, there is other similarities than just that. You could say like Aren O'Neill is the kind of game changer that a Christian McCaffrey proved last year. The way Eaton Rafferty comes out and his, you know, futuristic style of play from the goalkeeper is a bit like what Kyle Shanahan does when he operates his offense. Uh, I didn't know, can I leave the comparisons there, similarities there, or can I compare a manager that I love, 
I love Kier McGinney, but I know it's very divisive to say that. And I'm saying that to a Tyrone Tyro man that's rolled his eyes No, already. no, I, I wouldn't even say it's divisive to a Tyrone man. Get in the car, go up the M1, get into Nuri, and then hop on over to our man and start telling people that. I'd See, that's the thing. But that's the thing. So I, I had the to... I had the conversation last year um, at the Galway Armagh game at Crow Park, and I suppose I can I'm speaking about it from a Clare man who felt like the team only took a massive dip when Kieran McGinney was removed from his managerial position here years ago, and it took them years of catching up, and they're still um, faffing about with who like Glenn Ryan could be easily gone after this season for Clare, and it's Kieran McGinney at least brought stability and he brought an identity with the toughness. And I think that that's why I compared to Kyle Shannon. Kyle Shannon absolutely just brought an identity to the 49ers with a really solid offense that I just don't know who you ever replace Kieran McGinney with because even if the fans don't like him, teams are likely going to take a step down without him because he just has all the players so up for it. I love the comparison. I think you've absolutely nailed that comparison because you think of when Jimmy G came on in the field in the Super Bowl the year, the year like the month before COVID started with six minutes to go in that game and that game was theirs for the taking. They had that game by the jugular, shall we say. And they battled it. And Arma, you know, Tyrone fandom aside, Arma, unfortunately for them, both in the early 2000s when they should have won three to four all Islands, and even now over the last couple of years have bottled it. So it, it's an interesting comparison. I would say about McGinney, Kieran Donahue's class, but who would be Kieran Donahue in the NFL if you've got like <laughs> Kyle Shanahan there with the Niners? See, we, this is going down. Like, we, it we, is. We, that's we the next, that's the next but, crazy idea that we're going to have to do in July. <laughs> <laughs> presented by Diego. Um, right, let's, let me very quickly brush over Tyrone then. Um, I wanted our because I wanted to give him like the Cleveland Browns something for the crack, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I work in Armagh, so I can't say that. You know, I'm not allowed to say that. Very quiet few days anyway. Tyrone. Do you want to guess who I'm going to say for Tyrone out of interest? Oh, uh, is a base. Have you gone historically or current? I have gone historically. Then it might be the New England page. No. I would say this. In the late 90s, John Elway, everyone asked questions. Will he get over the line? Will he win a ring? Will he win a Super Bowl? And he won one. He took his team in his back the year after and he then won another one. And then he didn't win one in the way because he was gone by that point. But he sat like he silenced people. John Elway didn't win anything in the way because that's true. And I'm getting, getting mixed up here. But Peter Canavan, for me, it's almost that same sort of thing where people were asking questions of Canavan going into his mid 30s. Will Canavan win a Sam McGuire? And eventually they got over the line the year after Armada did, to be fair as well. Um, and then it's almost similar where the Broncos then get somebody else in high profile. They bring in Peyton Manning, Gary Kubiak as a head coach, and they win a Super Bowl 2015, 2016. And it's quite similar when you got Tyrone in the COVID Cup year, winning the All Ireland not, not too long ago as well. But it just, for me, it's like you got you, you Canavan, you had Muggsy, you had Doher to even start with, like the, the trifecta there when you had like Elway, Shannon Sharp. Uh, Steve Atwater and stuff. So I, I'm I'm just going to blatantly, obviously, the team I support and compare them to to Tyrone, showing that I was right to support the Broncos all along. Um, Patriots is a weird one because Tyrone and Armagh should have won more All Irelands than they did in in two in the two thousands. I, I have no doubt that Tyrone should have won five in that decade, no doubt whatsoever. So I would say if they had won four or five in that decade, Mark, I would certainly have said that they were a dynasty. Of the Patriots standard, but um, you know, there's reasons why Mickey left, and there's reasons why Mickey left when he did, and there's also repercussions of that because Mickey left and they won the All Ireland the year after with with Fergal and Brian. So I'm happy enough. <laughs> it's funny that you say um you would compare the Broncos to your own Tyrone team because for years, and I'm not uh, assigned to Calair in this exercise, but historically I would always compare the Cardinals experience at the very least to Calair because both are underdog and it's why I've had the enjoyments that I do but equally it can leave for long spells of your team not even having competitive games to play in I honestly didn't know who to pick for Galway um, oh and wow I thought there now... was a very I thought there was a very obvious one and this is based purely on um, 
recent uh, games. Well, can I guess you said the Bengals? Is that no? I can see. I mean, it's a team in the similar. I would have gone the Eagles. Exactly. You know, suddenly extremely at the forefront and the ability to perhaps survive for years. And then with the names on offense, whether it's your AJ Browns or what have you, it kind of compares to your Shane Walsh is one of the best in the league and uh, Damien Comer, who can kind of, he on his day is fantastic, but then people will question about when he's not on his day, a bit like Jalen Hurts. I, th- I think that's a fair point. Like, I mean, for me, I, I, I probably find that one more difficult than any of them and i sort of stuck on the steelers you know with the historic sort of franchise situation there you know pork joyce is is a a, a pillar of the community in galway yeah, silver, well fox. Respected. silver fox absolutely he was up in clonus and sunday as well mike tomlin vibes there um you know the steelers have been over the line in years gone by galway have not won the all ireland um since 2001 so there has, but I, I get that, I get that Eagles thing. And I was looking, and maybe I have looked at this too historically, and this is good because we can now go back and compare this year on year. Um, so yeah, I, I picked the Steelers thinking they got there. But so I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit in bed tonight thinking, how can I compare Shane Walsh to Kenny Pickett? <laughs> the other thing um, for me was that they're the runners up from last year, and um, that did lead in that opening spell of the game. And they looked like they could take control. And, you know, Galway at halftime definitely looked in control until, I suppose, at the end of the game. Uh, and did freeze play a part of it, I suppose. Um, Clifford did get a few freeze, didn't he? I don't know his exact count, but I, obviously there was a match. There was I'm a not good saying, few freeze in that match. Yeah, I'm not saying that it was the reason they won. Like, <laughs> the Chiefs definitely won off the back of that penalty, bringing the, the holding call that gave uh, them a Super Bowl and didn't give the chance to put the ball back in Jalen Hurts' arms. But yeah, I just I, that was one for me. But again, I'm definitely doing this as an extremely recent history um, comparison. Shout out to Polly Clifford if you are listening to this podcast, Polly. I hope you enjoy what Mark said there about the freeze. Um, <laughs> hey, um, they won the All Ireland. They can't be too upset with me. I was sitting in the lower Cusack wearing a Galway jersey, um, in disbelief, in absolute disbelief. And do you know what? Our night afterwards, I was looking forward so much to, you know, an All Ireland night and All Ireland Sunday that was very exciting. I the next day booked off from work and I. Did not need that day booked off because I was home in bed at nine o'clock. So, <laughs> yeah, like me and the COVID year, just when we won it, lies. Um, we are we have got some West Me fans listening to this. I'll not call out their names, but um, I'd be intrigued to see who you're going to go with West Me because Oof. in the current situation, they're in a group where there's not many people to think they'll get out of it, and I personally think they have a hell of a chance that they can beat Armagh. So, NFL terms wise. What are you thinking? Um, I don't see them beating Armagh and I don't give them much chance at all. So I compare them to my own Arizona Cardinals. They are in that group of death where they don't, you know, really factor as being a contender. Contender. Um, I don't know, would you say that? So when it comes to the Cardinals, the Cardinals are Vegas's favorite to be the number one overall pick next year. But I will say that Vegas gets that pick wrong. Uh, more often than not, because, you know, the you, they've picked one team, whereas any one of another 31 teams can beat them to it. You know, the odds are actually in your favor. Um, Like when the Lions and the Texans two years ago were favored to win no games at all, both teams didn't have the first overall pick. Am I correct in saying that now and thinking about it? Anyway, wait, they won games and it's like no one had given them a chance at all. So can the Cardinals produce anything this year? I don't think so. Can Westmead produce anything? I don't think so. But I mean, they could, <laughs> you know, like I, I don't. I, I am giving them the Arizona Cardinals as the worst team in the league. And I'm, yeah, I don't see like I'm not saying that the, the worst team in the All-Ireland series, but we'll talk about Sligo in a minute. But at least Sligo isn't in a group of death. They could get a result. But like Westmead's odds going into any game this year is going to be pretty hefty uh, when you look at the the point spread so you could say the same for the Arizona Cardinals they're probably going to be 10 point underdogs any game they go into um should we should we do like maybe a like we should maybe do like a second podcast for the Tulsa Cup one as well um I'm joking no 
uh, right here. I, uh, we, we, I had a t- I had a ticket. I could have gone to uh, Cavan Leash the other day, and I missed out. I was at the under twenty Calare match, and it was sold as a triple header of all things. You got the under twenties Calare, uh, it's like oh, you got Cavan Leash, and then you got the Cavan Miners afterwards. And uh, we didn't actually hang around, which was a shame. We could have caught it on GA Go though, as it turns out. Well, shot at GA Go. You, you also could have meant you also could have met Mark Hart as well, who was commentating on TG Car. Any, anywho. We need to roll through these two groups because we, we got to be off here in 10 minutes, man. Let, let's roll through this group. Uh, Dublin, Sligo, Roscommon, Kildare. I'm going to start with Sligo because I'm still at the time of recording here. Not sure why I was given Kildare because you're uh, a big Kildare man. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm not sure what to give them. So I'm going to say Sligo. Resurgence. Let's, you know, to look at what's happened in Sligo football recently in the sense of the, the infrastructure is there and you can see the development. Obviously, they lost to Kildare in the under-20 final there last week, but generally Sligo were going up in the world in comparison to their neighbours, Leitrim and Fermanagh, that aren't really going anywhere. Uh, let's be honest, Fermanagh's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Shout out to all the Bengals fans and Ennis Gillen. Um, Carl the Panthers, they get their draft pick, they get their quarterback, there is a resurgence and suddenly people start to hope that is my potential potential pick but that's a hell of a group for Sligo to be in Dublin, Sligo, Roscommon, Kildare it's almost as bad as the NFC South Mark Oh, I was hoping you'd say the AFC South because that's who I'd like compared to the Houston Texans that within that division of the AFC South, you never know what would, could work out for the Houston Texans. Um, and that's why I meant with that comment earlier on that within this division, Sligo could say be the Calair and then they go through to the next round. Um, the Carolina Panthers, I think that they might be a couple of steps away from that still. Okay. I respect the game. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you Kildare yet, So just go with Dublin and tell me it's the Patriots and move on. Oh, I didn't go to the Patriots again. I'm not talking about this historically. I'm talking about this in this Jeez. year's mold. No, uh, I went for the Jets. Really? Because like, if if you take away, and I know you're going like current, right? But outside of the Kerry Tyrone two years, they're they're like they're like the Chiefs in terms of dominance. They could run away with All-Ireland this year. The Jets is an interesting pick. I'm doing it based off purely looking forward with some knowledge of what we've just seen from the past. And I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. I suppose, look, there's the obvious New York and Dublin comparison, literally, proxim- well, not proximity-wise, but like geographically-wise, you know, they're massive to their own nations and everything seems to go through them. They are prime time purely because of what they are and, you know, the population-wise. Um, no one knows what Dublin is or are right now. They haven't played a Division One team, is what they obviously said uh, over the weekend. And that's true. Like, they haven't had to play exceptionally well. And, you know, that's been true of Dublin teams in the past, that they are able to coast through Leinster. Uh, they, it obviously was put up to them in the league. You know, that uh, Saturday evening game against Derry, I think it was up in Derry, was uh, fantastic and then I, they just got across the line so I mean that should give them a lot of hope but people aren't really talking about that at the moment but I suppose they have a very high ceiling if things click with Aaron Rodgers and we're waiting for everything to click with Dublin but everyone's kind of saying well look they had a fantastic performance against Loud the other day but it was only Loud you know people aren't giving too much credit to that but if they are to play one of these teams and it'll be exciting maybe when they play Ross Common that should be a good game what are we going to get from them? So we won't know that for a few more weeks. And it's the same with uh, the Jets. We won't know until a few weeks into the season what they really are. This My pick could have also been the Miami Dolphins because if they were playing on fire at the moment, you'd be saying, oh, they're so explosive that they'll put it up to anyone. And, you know, they're back and they're a contender. But for right now, I'm not, con- I'm not saying they're a definite contender, but, you know, the Jets are absolutely favored this year. And then obviously the uh, Aaron Rodgers veteran going to New York is just like the return of Stephen Cluxton so you couldn't miss out on that one either see this is the thing and like you literally stole my next comment it wasn't on Rodgers but it was going to be like imagine Brady went somewhere like the Dolphins were back to the box but like Clux was back I don't get why Cluxton's coming back either that, that's a whole different conversation um, but going by Dublin Twitter he's entitled to 
So I'm going to smile, <laughs> say that some of the games are in Diego this weekend, and I'm going to move on. Can, can, I, can I just say, I have no idea who to pick for Kildare. I have been sitting here all day thinking about this. I put down the Washington Commanders because I literally have no idea. I don't really know what the Commanders are, Mark, and that is where I currently stand with them. Could I say, potentially, they're maybe like the Chargers? No, I can't even. I can't even do that. I can't. I can't because the Chargers have got Justin Herbert at quarterback. I went. Ah, I'm going to stick awesome. Commanders. I went for the team that you picked for Sligo for the same reasons that you picked Sligo. And this is looking into this year. I would have gone for the Carolina Panthers for Kildare. Um, they're a decent roster, but they're, and they have, you know, had those pieces for a few years, um, but they aren't a serious contender. Um, you can convince yourself otherwise based on one result, you know, when they lost to Dublin, people were saying, oh, well, that's a great performance. Just like I was convincing myself that, and I still <laughs> did think that the Carolina Panthers could win the NFC South last year until they didn't. They ran out of steam, just like they Calais ran out of steam this year against Dublin in the semifinal of the Leinster. But the biggest comparison for me is the under 20s winning the All-Ireland the other day. You would hope that that's just like getting Bryce Young in as your quarterback with the first overall pick in the draft, that that hope that that new injection of youth and talent for the future can give you. So, yeah, I thought um, the Carolina Panthers were more apt, apt than Derry, or sorry, than, uh, like you said, for Sligo, but it's for the same reasons as Sligo with maybe uh, a couple more sprinkled in there. I love how excited you look about Kildare, by the way. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, <laughs> group, group four, Derry, Claire, Monaghan, Donegal. I do not in any way, shape or form, feel sorry for anybody from Donegal the year they're having, having the drive to Clare for a game. If the game isn't Clare, I don't even know, but Donegal are the fourth seed, I think. Um, back to the NFL talk, Michael, this is an NFL podcast. Uh, I'm going to say Derry, right? I'm ha- I'm like, my mom's family is in Derry, so I'm, I'm half Derry, right? I don't like Derry. I don't like our mom. <laughs> but I will say that Derry have come out of nowhere in the sense of a lot of these players down through the years, unless you're sort of some sort of guy head that is heavily involved in watching GAA, a lot of these lads like Chrissy McKeag, Brandon Rogers have just popped up out of nowhere and they have been superb over the last couple of years. And I felt for them against Galway last year. This they, they feel like that energy, that injection, that young talent is there. Like for example, McGuigan as well. I picked the Bengals because I think Derry are like the team that could make a jump. But the thing about the Bengals is historically the Bengals, what the Bengals haven't won the Super Bowl, have it? Derry have won the All Ireland with with uh, Joe Raleigh, <clears throat> uh, and that would be the only thing you couldn't really compare it to. But I feel like the energy is Joe Burrow esque. Can imagine Joe Burrow playing for Ball on the Screen here now. But um, I went with Derry for the Bengals, and can I just say just just to end my picks, please guess who I picked. For Monaghan, because I went against our rules with divisions privately and WhatsApp. Oh, and do, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, that's that's opened up a whole can of worms because who did I have? I am. Um, I'm not sure because now there's 16 teams that I hadn't thought about. I kept for Monaghan. I put down the Vikings, so that was my pick for them. Well, as a man that lost to Monaghan a few weeks ago, I, I asked the question publicly: What are Monaghan? Outside of Connor McManus and Rory Began, what is this Monaghan team? Outside of Ryan Tannehill and Derek Henry, what is the Tennessee Titans team? Ryan Tannehill's getting a wee bit older. Derek Henry might not be there in a few in a few months. So he might be there. Um, Connor McManus is thirty five years of age. I'm just putting it out there. They're both game changers. That was the only connection I made. But when Monaghan are good, they're really really good. Roy Bagan on his day is the best keeper in Ireland. When the Titans are good, and they have been good over the last few years, not last year, but the couple of years before that, they've been really, really good. So that's my comparison. And this ends my TED talk. Who have you got for Donegal? This is really well, interesting. Well, I I just, I actually think you're spot on with money now you say it. And I actually did have for Derry, I had the, the Bengals as well. So, um, yeah, I think you're spot on with nice those one. comparisons. For Donegal, um, again, this is looking into the future and you're talking about the plight that they look to be under at the moment. It has to be Green Bay. Um, living off their historic name. Oh, like Michael Gordon. Murphy and Aaron Rodgers. 
I like it. Well, kind of. And, you know, it's kind of they're leaving their heyday, you know, their best years look like they're in the very recent past, but they're going to be going into what we don't really know. And absolutely, Michael, Mur- Michael Murphy retired from inter football last off season in terms of the GAA world. And then Aaron Rodgers departs this year, this off season from the Green Bay Packers. So I think, and then the green and gold of the two teams as well, obviously is a, you can't miss the comparison, but yeah, I, I guess it's just the uncertainty and that they were very good and they were a team that no one wanted to play. It's that going up north to the very tip top of Ireland, going to uh, Donegal seems like going to that trek to Lambo where you're going to meet those very uh, intense fans. So I think, yeah, I thought Donegal was a pretty apt uh, comparison for Green Bay. I love that. That's 10 out of 10. Let's just end this podcast right here and right now. Apart from the fact that my sister was called Claire and we haven't talked about Claire. <laughs> I mean, oh. do you know, Mark... Uh, it pains me, and this is this is the game, this is the problem being in the north. I haven't been to Clare. I don't even know where Clare is. Like it's down there somewhere. So I'll be I'll go there at some point. I, I remember my parents had to drive there years ago for a wedding. And it took them like six hours back in the day. So I can imagine. Um is folks, let me know if you're from Clare, let me know. Is it worth visiting? Uh Pod's the sponsor, isn't it? I'm just gonna yeah, guess team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, Falcons. The Falcons. How's that? Falcons, no. The Falcons didn't qualify based on our rules of how we were selecting teams. I will actually say before Claire begins, we did miss a team that I have to come back to that also wears yellow and blue. And it's an interesting team, so we will come back to them. And it's from that uh, Claire Sligo in Dublin. It's the fourth part of that group that we actually missed out on. But for Claire, it is an absolute dart throw who you want to uh, compare them to. I went for the Indianapolis Colts. I said it's kind of a team that is realistically making up the numbers i mean i looked at the betting odds and they are 251 to win the all ireland series but against certain sides um they will get wins that they're not like a winless team uh they can absolutely put it up to teams so if you look at the monster final obviously it was an absolute hammering there was no intensity there was nothing going on so actually you could compare them to the atlanta falcons in that sense because the atlanta falcon stadium has been re- uh, has been empty in recent years as good as their fans are they've kind of been leaving games and not showing up to games i know there was a big claire contingent that went to the monster game but they were just not allowed to get going because Kerry gave them such a hockey in but when you go back a bit further into the monster championship they needed to go late against Cork but they did get over the line against Cork and the same could be said for Limerick who they probably should have beaten um, they uh, flurry at the end is how they kind of got across the line but then when it comes to the big dogs they don't really you know stand a chance you, you know they, they know their role against the big dogs and they don't beat them I'd be upset as a Clare fan over the last few years because Clare have had to play them a few times or that's the COVID year we had them in that little group whatever that system was that little setup that the GA had um, or even this year Clare were able to get a point win out of them when they didn't deserve it so I feel like Clare often doesn't reflect well within their own record how good they should be Um that you know they you'd be frustrated as a fan being like they do understand a bit more or sorry they do um deserve a bit more respect and they should be able to put it up a bit more to some teams i think that's where the colts have been at the last few years that they've had this decent roster that you could say has underperformed i think underperformed in a different sense of the word but it still has underperformed and there has been talent there and you know there's been good coaching but they haven't been able to get it across the line that i actually would say that claire's league position this year was a bit unfair almost and could you say that about the indianapolis call to an hour on a downward trajectory having like two years ago they missed the playoffs in some crazy uh terms obviously in the last week of the season and that was the year that they were absolutely favored to win the division so yeah, I think that's an apt one. And do I need to go back to uh, Ross Common now, who is an exciting team? I I have to like that's why we couldn't uh, miss Ross Common. But Ross Common, we obviously missed in the Group Three or whatever. Sorry to the Rossies. Any time um, I'm in Ross Common, I've got a bad experience. Um, just like from nights out. I'll, I'll just leave it. God, there. how many nights out have you gone on in Ross Common? Never have I. It's, it's more. It's more nights out around Ross Common, and then before you know it, you end up in a centra. And you're looking at them <laughs> giving you a chicken for the roll, and you're like, "How are these lads paying six euro fifty for this in the south?" Oh my word! And then it, it goes from it goes from here to there. Right? Who, who is the Rossies? Let's end it. Hey, give me give me your one because one jumped out to me extremely obviously. 
hard. Like the Rossies a couple of years ago were, were really getting there, but now it's like, don't tell me, don't don't say it. I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a pick here. As this podcast goes silent, um. So I, I, as you think, I'll give you some hints about why I thought. Um, I guess right now I don't think that Roscommon is a team that you want to face. They obviously beat Mayo earlier on in the year. It shows the Vikings. potential that they have. No, but you're kind of in the right ballpark. The ball. <laughs> their, their manager, their ma- their manager also oh, seems to. The Lions, boom. Yeah, I hit them as the Lions. They're kind of this new threat that we don't exactly know what we're getting off. We don't know if they're going to be the team that played against Mayo or the team that Galway played last time out in the semi-final of uh, Connacht, where, again, they went in uh, extremely like, closely linked or uh, close on the, uh, the betting odds or whatever, that teams that, you know, you would give them respect. The manager thing that I just said there about anytime. The Lions win, Dan Campbell is featured heavily. Anytime Ross Common wins, Davy Burke is featured heavily. You know, that he seems to be on to bigger and greater things over the next few years. Um, yeah, I just I had said that I if I could not if I could pick one team that I didn't want to play against in their home venue for this All Ireland series, it was I wouldn't want that Ross Common away game. Um it just it seems to be a tough place to go up to now. Obviously memory bias in the last few weeks we haven't seen them for what like six weeks at this point it seems since they lost to Galway but uh, they're very tough to decide to beat down or to um, break down and as I mentioned at the very top of the show I think that Dublin Roscommon game like if Dublin continue to not fire on all cylinders then Roscommon all of a sudden could be topping this group and you know that makes it very easy for them to progress further into the competition I love it we need on GA go as a some sort of presenter. Um, I look, I've enjoyed this. I, I do enjoy our GA podcast, I will say. And for people listening, going, I don't watch the GA, I watch rugby. We'll try and do that as well. Or I don't watch rugby, I watch the cricket. Probably can't do that, but we'll, we'll, we'll try and be as diverse <laughs> and as opinionated as we can be. Um, and we'll, we, we'll obviously have a bit of crack. Uh, folks, this podcast has been brought to you by our lovely Mohara's at GAGO, GAGO.ie, uh, double header on Saturday, 3 o'clock and 5.15, Kerry Mayo, Mayo, Mayo. And then at 5.15, Galway Tyrone, on so- on, on, as well on Saturday, 6 o'clock, you, you got Kilkenny against Dublin in the Hurling and Leitrim against Fermanagh at the same time in the Tolchin Cup. Shout out to all the Fermanagh ones listening to this podcast. And Leitrim ones that that's a local derby there. It's like it's like the Bears against the Packers there. Like that Leitrim from Anagher. Yeah, it's funny. Anyway, right? look, the GA or GA go has obviously been in the news a bit lately. Look, don't hate the player, hate the game. It is actually a fantastic service. Like the politics are ever far more games, Mark. Yeah, there's so many games that's fantastic. Like when this was first offered to us during COVID years, we were absolutely like thrilled. Look, I know there's a lot that goes on that oh, why do we have to pay be paying? The players aren't Pay, we pay a lot of it. Look, leave that all aside. The actual service itself is absolutely savage. Like, so, like, I know people are giving out about it. I was giving out about the whole, you know, ordeal as well. But we're actually blessed to have the games because there was always going to be clashes with some of these big games. And at least if you hear that a game is savage, I love listening to Saturday Sport and RT1. So, uh, like, I have that anyway. But if you hear there's a savage game happening, Sometimes there was no TV cameras at it and you had to wait until the Sunday game. Now there is TV cameras and you just switch it on. Like, give me a break. <laughs> it's like, it's great to have the service there. And I would say the service is as good as NFL Game Pass in terms of the quality of it and in terms of, of the reliability of it. I've watched, uh, I've watched Derry against Monaghan and I've watched uh, Armagh against Calvin on it because uh, I'm a big Ulster head, obviously. So not, People gave out about Sky and then they, they gave out about it so much that people weren't subscribing. Then Sky, you have to dip out of the market. Like, give me a break. Like, we can't have it every which way. I'm going to be seen as a real past, poster boy now. I hope I don't see a big billboard go up. <laughs> Mark Hogan. Quote. And Hogan NFL. <laughs> <laughs> um, big, big thanks to GA Go for supporting this podcast only. We're back to the long God talk and more NFL talk in the next one. I hope, folks, you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, profootball.ie, sign up. You can sign up for free. Subscribe. You get some podcasts before other people have a bit of crack. Uh, and if you check out our socials over the weekend, well, over the weekend, on Friday probably, 
uh, you'll get an opportunity to win a GEA Go Pass thanks to the people at GEA Go. But for now, it's time for myself and Mark to GEA Go and get out of here. And we will talk Lovely. to you soon. Mark, uh, it's not a good